This is actually a very, very easy question, but they wrote it in such a way that they knew most people would not understand what they were reading. So this is common. The SAT on math, at least, is definitely choosing very math heavy language, knowing that most people are not going to be able to understand it in the same way that in reading, we get passages with a lot of science heavy language or poem heavy language, and that throws us off. But I'll show you, we should, if we just follow each piece, it, it makes sense. And we don't really need to know too much for the exponential function F. So look at your choices. These are all exponential functions. They have exponents and they all are called F. So that's not interesting. The value of F of one is K. So that's about as straightforward as it gets to. If you do f of 1, you're going to get k. Where k is a constant means it's a number, right? We don't know the number, but it's a number. Which of the following equivalent forms of the function f? Meaning we don't need to do any algebra here to see which one is, like, we don't need to build this equation. All of these are equivalent, meaning they all would give us the same value. They would show up the same on Desmos if we graphed them. So we're not going to bother to do that but they are, they're telling us they're equivalent. So which of the following equivalent forms of the function f shows the value of k as the coefficient or the base? Coefficient, constant, base, these are just code words for number in the equation. A coefficient is a number that kind of comes before usually a variable or some other part of the equation. Uh, the base would be the part that the exponent is attached to, and then a constant in an equation is just some other random number. So when we talk about k being a constant, it's doing the same thing. We just don't know yet what that number is for k, so we have to kind of wait and call it a letter until we know for sure. Now, the x and the f of x in these equations, these are not constants. Those are variables. You can plug in lots of different numbers for x, but the other pieces, since they're already numbers, those are constant. It's going to be 50 the whole time if we're looking at choice A. That number 50 doesn't change. So what they're really saying here is when we put in f of 1, we're going to get some number out. And that number should also be in the equation. So when we get to the right answer, I think it's going to be obvious. So let's do choice A, right? So what, we'll follow the instruction, right? Do f of 1. What is f of 1? So f of 1 is going to be 50 times 1.6 to the 1 plus 1, which is 2, right? Squared. So it's, this is definitely going to be wrong, but for the sake of showing you, right? So if I do 1.6 squared times 50, I get 128. So 128, look, it's nowhere to be found in this equation. Now looking ahead, I do see that choice C has 128. So I, I already know that that's the answer. And the reason I know that is they told me these are all equivalent. So I know that when I put the number one in for X, I'm going to keep getting 128 out. They've told me that in the question. But even if you didn't see that part, you at least should know what to do. F of one equals K is basically a plug points into equations kind of instruction. Put in one and see what you get. And I think if you had, if you were totally confused by the question, but you would still kind of mindlessly followed the plug points into equations instruction you probably would have figured it out because because lo watch, let's see what happens, right? So again, ooh, that's weird. I'm going to be much more thorough than I would have been on the real test here. So f of 1 here is 80 times 1.6 to the first. So 80 times 1.6, I'm just going to verify what I already know, is 128. Okay, let's do it again. f of 1 is equal to 128 times 1.6 to the 1 minus 1, which is 0. So no wonder 128 shows up in that equation because when we put 1 in 4x, the, 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 the base goes away because everything raised to the zero power is 1. So this is just the 128. And look, 128 is my answer. 128 is a coefficient in the equation. This is proof. But just to show you, you know, let's continue 204.8 times 1.6 to the 1 minus 2, which is negative 1. So 1.6 to the, again, I know the answer is 128. Actually, I think this one doesn't work out quite so well. So 1.6 to the negative 1 times 204.8. Oh, it is. It's exactly 128. I, for some reason, thought it was going to be a rounded version. But no, nope, it still works. So look, my hope is that if you were a mindless robot and you were like, huh, f of 1, that's like a point. And I have equations. Let me put one in for into the equations and see what happens. Even if you had no idea why that would help you or what they were asking or anything else about this, if you just mindlessly did the strategy that I never shut up about, you would figure it out because you'd be like, huh, they all gave me 128 and C has 128 in it.
I bet that's the answer. That's right. It's it's basic like Sesame Street logic here. One of these things is not like the others. Like let's play a game, and and that one has the one twenty eight you're looking for, and you know maybe coefficient or base or scary words, but shows the value of k isn't. We found k is one twenty eight. It shows up in that equation. So my, my point here, I'm making a big deal about this because I think a lot of people get get just give up way too early when the language of a question is very mathematical. They're like, oh, I, I don't, I'm not a math brain person. I don't know. Well, do you, do you speak English? That's really what this is. And so you're much more able to understand this stuff than you think. You're just quitting too early. And as always, if any question is hard, but you have some way to find points and equations, plug them in. You will learn things that will move the question along and then maybe it will make sense to you later. So don't worry about understanding the whole thing right away. It's okay to just do step one and let steps two and three and four reveal themselves as you solve the problem. You have to have faith in yourself and a little bit of faith in the strategies.